Slattery. Slattery absent. Clinker. Clinker absent. Johnson. Here. Johnson here. Alexander. Here. Alexander here. Bellotto. Here. Bellotto here. Cosidus. Here. Cosidus here. Rita. Here. Rita here. Donahue. Here. Donahue here. Holly. Here. Holly here. Farrenwald. Here. Farrenwald here. Hill. Here. Hill here. Mac. Here. Mac here. Carr. Here. Car here. Cantello Zellman. Here. Cantello Zellman here. 12 present. Thank you very much. Now we move on to the presentation of general proceedings. I need a motion to approve the City Council minutes for the date of June the 11th, 2019. Do I have a motion? By Alderman Carr. Do I have a second by Alderman Lovato? Roll call, please. Johnson. Yep. Johnson, aye. Alexander. Aye. Alexander, aye. Bellotto. Aye. Bellotto, aye. Cosidus. Cosidus, aye. Rita. Abstain. Rita, abstain. Donahue. Aye. Donahue, aye. Holly. Aye. Holly, aye. Farrenwald. Aye. Farrenwald, aye. Hill. Aye. Hill, aye. Mac. Aye. Mac, aye. Carr. Aye. Carr, aye. Cantello Zillman. Aye. Cantello Zillman, aye. 11 eyes and one abstention, Your Honor. Thank you very much. Could I have Mr. Akinawa up by the podium, please? My name is Anita Kenny. I'm a new resident. I live on Union Street and I just want to tell the City Council that I'm concerned about a lack of transparency in bidding and procurement on contracts awarded by the City. I'm a small business owner. I would appreciate the opportunity to compete for work and ensure that the City is getting the best value for the services it pays for. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you very much. My name is Anna Stang and I uh, brought up this point at the Judiciary Committee, but I'd like all the aldermen to hear it um, from me as a citizen of Blue Island and a supporter of Bios Farm. And that is that I don't want to hear any more finger pointing or excuses or reasons why the lease on the farm failed. But I understand that the city, the farm, and MWRD have 120 days, give or take, to figure out what we're going to do with the farm. And I would make a suggestion that the city of Blue Island zones that land for agricultural use so that you can 
uh, renegotiate the lease with MWRD for that land so that they can put it out for bid as agricultural use so we can have a farm in Blue Island. And I am concerned that if it doesn't happen in the next 120 days that we are going to lose our farmers who after they started the farm five years ago each bought homes in Blue Island and that we may lose our opportunity to have a farm <coughs> in Blue Island for a very long time. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Anyone else? We move on to report of city officials, presentation of resolutions. to slow you down uh, this evening but I did participate in uh, can everybody hear me is this mic on it's on. okay great I participated in, in this evening's uh, Judiciary Committee meeting and you know the things we discussed were the changing hands of documents regarding uh, rules of procedure for the City Council meeting the manner in which the mayor pro tem is going to be selected just by uh, virtue of uh, being the finance chairperson. Um, this is a lot of changes. There were no public hearings for this. Certainly there needs to be public input at a bare minimum. Certainly uh, documents were changing hands. Certainly um, along with documents changing hands, there had to be discussion outside of a committee meeting and tonight was the first Judiciary Committee meeting so I can't imagine how a document of several pages could be created and crafted without a uh, some sort of discussion outside of the committee or outside of the City Council meeting. Uh, certainly uh, at the last uh, at previous City Council meetings we saw uh, Open Meetings Act complaint. Certainly, my alderman didn't contact me regarding any changes, one of whom, uh, Ms. Contello Zillman, sits on the Judiciary Committee. I know you have my number. Uh, anybody can reach me. You know where I live. By all means, I want to see transparent, open government. I want to see you all working for the taxpayers. And once again, you ran saying you were going to resurface the streets and repeal the water rate increase. There's no evidence that as a city council, you're working toward those goals. That's why most of you managed to get elected, for God's sake. That's what you said you were going to do? That really should be your very first order of business. You are not gaining or garnering the trust of the public the tax and the taxpayers, and you need to do so. I'm confident that you are well aware of the last Open Meetings Act complaint. I'm confident that the committee tonight is aware that there are grave concerns regarding uh, the advisory attorneys, uh, Wallace and Welch. It, it, based upon my limited knowledge, it sounds like that's who crafted that document. We didn't have a city attorney in the Judiciary Committee meeting. That's a concern. Our mayor, uh, a mayor, uh, I, I don't know how you're feeling about any of this. Our city attorney, uh, Mr. Kerry Horvath, uh, I don't know if you've had an opportunity to uh, peruse, digest, to uh, look at the document to see what legal pitfalls there, there may possibly be in that document moving forward. There's a lot of concern. You're going to have to move together as a cohesive group. You're going to have to work together, like it or not. You're going to have to work for the taxpayers, like it or not. Please do so. Thank you. Thank you very much. 
Anyone else? Go ahead. Can I ask um, Ms. King? Is it? Okay. Ms. Kinney, I'm sorry. Um, you didn't say what type of business you're in. I mean, I don't see that it's relevant. This work should be, I'm sorry, I'll put the microphone. Sorry, I'm trying to get this thing to work. I'm not speaking here as a business owner today. I'm speaking as a citizen. I think there's been a lack of transparency in multiple contracts, and I don't see what my line of work has to do with it. I'm sorry, Alderman, I don't mean to be hostile, but this is a broader concern that is structural with the way that the city is bidding and awarding work. I, maybe I misheard you, but I thought you said that you would like the opportunity. Oh, I certainly would, but I think everyone should have the opportunity to bid on every contract awarded by the city unless there's a micro-purchase authority. And there's been a complete, there's not only, you know, a lack of transparency with, um, you know, I've never seen an RFP posted for these services, but, you know, it's not just that um, the work isn't being, you know, solicited. You know, there's no solicitation or competition for these awards, but there's also apparently a blank check being written for, to a law firm that was selected with, you know, and I didn't want to even get political because to me it's a broader issue. And, you know, I don't, you know, you were all elected. You know, you, have, you certainly, in my opinion, have the authority to seek, to seek counsel as you see fit. So, you know, my, my issue is not necessarily with that and I don't want to derail my point. But, you know, to me it's an issue as a small business owner that there seems to not have been a competitive process with that law firm. You know, and you know, I don't want to criticize you for doing business with them. You know, the young lady, uh, the people that have been representing you seem very competent. But to me, the problem is with the award and with the lack of transparency in that process. I'm sorry, does that, does that answer your question? Well, no. But what I asked you was, <laughs> what is your business? I mean, I, I do research services. I do communicate. I do a lot of things. I have a, I have a few clients that, that I work for. But, um, yeah. So I do like professional services for, for people and I have a small contracting business um, where I do government contracting. So, you know, I'm very familiar with how RFPs work, how bids work, and you know, um, I don't want to make criticisms of specific award of specific, specific awards because my issue is not with the vendor. You know, for all I know, the best person was selected, but how were they selected? What are the procedures for that? Those aren't transparent to me as a business owner who's located in this community, and to me that's not acceptable. So oh. I'm sorry. Anyone else? If not, I'll move on to the mayor's announcements. Let me start off with this so I'll go backwards. Uh, as you know, on June the 28th, we're having a celebration for an event by the SEPA station, also known as the Waterfall, starting at 5 p.m. Fireworks at dusk. There will be food. Uh, entertainment, DJ, and then the fireworks. So again, it's this coming Friday. Instead of the July 3rd uh, festivities, it's being held on the 28th. So this Friday by the SEPA station, by the waterfall. To the two aldermen, Alderman Carr, Alderman Contello Zillman, uh, again, thank you. They, have, they uh, showed up at the Blessing of the Waters with uh, <coughs> Mr. Shepherd, uh, representatives from Metropolitan Water Reclamation District, a couple of commissioners shows up, a couple of their staff of the other commissioners who couldn't be present were there present. So they have between 60 to 70 uh, people there for a very lovely uh, blessing of the waters for 2019. Let me move on to this so you know. As you're aware, Metro South has announced their future closure to address this situation since day one. The city is hosting a summit on July the 11th, 2019 at 1.30 p.m. here in the East Annex. The purpose of this summit is to produce an action plan with impacts and solutions to be presented to the State Health Facility Service Review Board at their public hearing and upcoming board meetings. Residents will have the opportunity to voice their opinion at this hearing and at the board meeting. For more information can be found on the city's website Additionally, so you know, <coughs> we've been in contact with the Office of U.S. Senator Tammy Duckworth. Uh, they have our support. They are supporting us. They are reaching out to their fellow congressmen and senators, including Bobby Rush, Robin Kelly, Daniel Lipinski, Jesus Garcia, Senator Durbin, as well as herself. Um, they have sent correspondence that they will support us 110% with the Metro South situation, and I have a letter uh, in response dated today. Um, so again, 
There are our meetings set since day one. Let me say this, and I can only say this. I, as the mayor, have had to sign a letter of confidentiality because there are negotiations as we speak regarding the hospital and the purchase of the hospital, and I'll leave it at that. Um, again, there are multiple meetings be going to be held not only here in the city, but in the state regarding this issue. This is an issue that not only affects the city of Blue Island, it affects the, the Southland, it affects Chicago, ourselves, and all the suburbs that surround um, Metro South. This hospital, this institution, has been in our community since 1905. And I repeat, since 1905. Uh, it has gone through, you know, uh, under the leadership and direction of the sisters, then uh, a private entity for, uh, for profit, and hopefully everything goes well. That hospital will continue, as I said, I cannot go into more disclosure, but there have been meetings regarding that, and I'll leave it at that. We need your input. We need your support, whatever way. And we've been in contact since day one, since two weeks ago, from the county level, the state level, up to the federal level. And they're aware of it. If you know it, they've been aware of it because it's been in the media, not only in the local papers, the South Town, it's been on 32, Channel 5, 7, 9, uh, Univision, Telemundo, NPR. So it's out there. So they are aware of it. And we've been in communication with not only lawyers, but even with the mayor of Melrose Park with the Westlake situation so that we are not reinventing the wheel and we move on and learn from their mistakes and go forward. So that's the update regarding the Metro South issue. And it's a, something of importance for all of us. Uh, city clerk, any business? No business. Uh, any bids? No bids. Mr. City Treasurer. Thank you. Uh, I apologize to the alderman uh, in this last minute uh, with the transfer of uh, funds, restricted, unrestricted funds, uh, if you had a chance to review it, the total amount is 311379 I need a motion. I have a motion. Alderman uh, Donahue, do you have a second? Alderman Carr, any questions? Roll call, please. Johnson. No. Johnson, no. Alexander. Aye. Alexander, aye. Bellotto. Aye. Bellotto, aye. Cosidus. Cosidus, aye. Rita. Aye. Rita, aye. Donahue. Aye. Donahue, aye. Holly. Aye. Holly, aye. Farrenwald. Aye. Farrenwald, aye. Hill. Aye. Hill, aye. Mac. Aye. Mac, aye. Carr. Aye. Carr, aye. Cantillo Zuman. Aye. Cantillo Zuman, aye. Eleven eyes and one million. Thank you. Other than that, uh, hopefully by next council meeting, I have some uh, suggestions. This will be the end of the second quarter uh, concerning the appropriation. And some other financial information is going to be given up. Thank you very much. Thank you, City Attorney. <clears throat> yes, we are right here. First item on the agenda is Ordinance Number 2019-021, an ordinance approving and authorizing the First Amendment to lease agreement dated June 11, 2013, between the Metropolitan Water Reclamation District of Chicago, of Greater Chicago, and the City of Blue Island. Members of the Council before you act on this. There, yesterday, uh, we received an amendment to the agreement which was attached to the ordinance which you have in front of you, and also a letter from the Water Reclamation District. I'll read the part which pertains to the revisions that they are including in this particular amendment. In the letter itself, they said, Blue Island is reminded that although the district has agreed to enter into this amendment, the violations referenced in the notice of default dated April 2, 2019 are ongoing and will not be considered corrected until BIOS Farm its crops and improvements have been completely removed from Blue Island's leasehold and the district has been fully compensated for any unauthorized activities. Any such removal must be directly overseen by Blue Island. Blue Island is further reminded to continually monitor its leasehold and immediately discontinue any unauthorized uses thereof, including use of any portion of the leasehold by adjacent landowners. 
apparently the district has taken issue with the concept of a farm and they've revised the amendment to the lease which was designed to allow for special events as well as uh, use of a portion of the property for a community farm so what they have done is they have eliminated in the recitals it would be the fourth recital or the third recital on the first page they have eliminated the word community farms and replaced it with community gardens they have in on page four in paragraph five they have eliminated any reference to the words farms and crops and farming and replaced them with the words gardens and items and gardening they have also requested the city to provide a boundary survey of the entire group of parcels that the city is leasing from the water reclamation district for the bike trail the bike and walking trail as well as the various other parcels that we lease for various purposes i want to bring that to your attention we did not get a chance to uh, circulate the revised lease to you but it is the district's position that farming or the reference to farming on parcel that it's being uh, done on is an improper use of the lease. I want to bring that to your attention before you vote on this particular amendment. Alderman, go ahead. I, I, is the implication here, I know that the idea that I'm aware of at this point is that, that we had a 120 day period to clear this up. Does that affect that grace period? There is no reference in the letter to the grace period, but I would imagine if they have discussed that. I was not made yeah. party to the negotiations, but if they have discussed that with the city, I would imagine the district will honor the grace okay. period. Go ahead. Um, why wasn't this brought to the attention of the farmers before they before they planted? I'm sorry, what? <clears throat> why was this not brought to the attention of the farmers before they planted? Alderman, you I, know, in the spring. I didn't know there was a farm there. I, this was the first I've when I reviewed the amendment to the lease, that was the first time I referred, well, I was even made aware that there was a farm. When we received this yesterday, it was the first time I was made aware that there was an issue concerning the farm. I believe there, there was a meeting at the Water Reclamation District on, um, I think it was Monday, but prior to that, there was also another meeting uh, in the past where a representative of the farmers was present and, and appeared before the water reclamation district so I think they were aware of the water reclamation district's objection uh, I don't know when they were first made aware of it I can't tell you that go ahead Mr. Mr. Council. yes uh, councilman is is this the verbiage from farming to gardening or was it a sale of product or what was the, uh, the discrepancy can't sell. I, I'm not really sure what the what brought about the objection okay. by the Water Reclamation District because, as I said, I was not privy to any of that. Okay, because I know uh, I know they feed a lot of families. They do not want they do not want product that's grown on the parcel that's being farmed or gardened. They do not want that being sold. Okay. And they're they're in a position where I believe that's. Why they have sent the city the notification that they sent the city in April. Go ahead. I, I, this is all new to me. <clears throat> so they've been doing this for five years, and now all of a sudden they're saying they can't do it no longer. Is that correct? Right. And yes, is so there any I way we can wait the 120 days and meet let, let me let me throw this, this out, out without committing the city? Pardon me. Let me say this uh, regarding the city. There's some information that it could probably be readdressed if we take more of a leading role and if we can guarantee that the product that's being grown is not sold to the public <coughs> or for profit if they can if we can prove or verify that any monies 
that they are collected as a result of the product is going back into the farm and only for the use of the farm and not for profit, I think Water Rec will have no problem with that as the, as the way the bio farm exists today. So that could we just path, could we hold off on this and try to work with them? Is well, that as of the blessing of the waters, I did speak to some people there who have work for Metropolitan Water Proclamation Board, and that's what they told me, that they'll look into it. So that's look what we are for right now. I, I just would somewhat corroborate that, and that I, when this first, when this came up a couple of days ago, and I was, it was kind of new to me that, that, we're, that they were going to, you know, lose the uh, right to be there, I did contact Commissioner, Commissioner Deborah Shore and wrote her a letter, um, you know, just urging that they do everything they could to accommodate Biles Farm, and actually she wrote me a really nice letter back and had one of her aides get back in touch with me. And apparently from the meeting that they had, uh, the MWRD does recognize the value of having a farm and farms on their property because it's actually a, um, a way to retain more water to the person who right. read that. So they, they get in and they, they are interested in, and it sounds like committed, to develop, but they don't have the policies in place to do that right now. So they are going to work on that, but that involves lawyers and so forth. So it sounds like we're kind of stuck with the situation this year, from years I can tell. Um, but that they are very interested in resolving the situation in a way that would be favorable, not just to Blue Island, but the communities all over the area. Go ahead, Alderman. I've been, um, as the Alderman of the area, and I've been in constant communication with Larry and Joe for <coughs> three, four months on this almost daily, and uh, contacted five or six in-person commissioners, including Deborah Shore, which I agree, she's been very uh, good for the town. Uh, she responds, yeah, she's great. Yeah. And, and Alfredo, too. Yeah. Um, the main issue is, I was on the phone today, I heard the 120 days myself, that, it, that they're allowed to wind down the rest of the summer. The main sticking point, without going through many, uh, too much, is a lot of issues uh, on both sides. It was the selling of the product is their main issue. We can clean this up for next year, but the main issue is letting them wind down this year. Or alternatively, find another location that's not MDWRD controlled and totally controlled by the city of Blue Island, which there's parcels in town um, that uh, are available if, we, if they're interested in it. Now, I've been, again, on the phone with Larry and Joe every day, one or the other, and I think this could be resolved for sure for next year. It's the winding down for this year. We have a verbal communication, as uh, Alderman Farrell just said, and as Ms. Stang said, 120 days. I heard today from Mark Miller. We have uh, 90 to 120 days to wind down, which would finish up the, the season, but they're not allowed to sell the rest of the season. So, um, the, and we mentioned fundraisers, um, uh, drain the keg events, uh, and, and me, and also Alderman Kazar, since he got involved now, have been uh, very supportive of continuing the farm. It's very good for the community. We've always uh, supported the farm down there. We want to continue it. And if uh, uh, we got to find the light at the end of the tunnel, maybe it's a blessing. We find a better location that's a permanent location. Um, right now, it's MWRD property that previous to this was just um, the land behind Lincoln School, if anybody doesn't know. Lincoln School on the south side of the Calsag Channel, east of Chatham Street, and it was just grass before. And so now they've been using it for at least five, six years, I think, at least. And we've even gone so far as uh, uh, applied for grants to install water sources at that yep. property that didn't exist before <coughs> that are in the in the course of being done right so we we put some in, uh, we've got some money going to that area that was totally grant funded to help sustain the farm and uh, the city I think all of us support the farm we just got to find a way to make this happen now, going back to the last two three months um, we've deferred this a few times with the, the the city has asked for deferments I personally asked for deferments I've met with like I said five six commissioners Personally, Frank Avila, who's on here, I've met with, Deborah Shore I've met with, and um, they all seem supportive, but the issue was the, the selling. And, and me, as a former union person, I look for loopholes. The loophole is they don't want no selling. Uh, they can't really go around that. And they need to sustain themselves, and they're not making a profit. I, the word profit is they're selling produce, but it's going right back in. They're putting money out of their own pockets for this. We all know this if we patronized them in the past. So we just got to figure out a way to... Accommodate. I've already put it on the agenda for my July 10th community development meeting, Good. which is a week and a half away. And uh, just like a few other things, I want them housed there. Larry and Joseph, they're going to be there. And uh, I got to reach out. I think Mark said he was going to be there from the city so we can move forward and look at different options and also different options where the, the city is the only person they're dealing with, which I think would be the great long term solution. So, okay, so, so thank you. That's where we are. And didn't the governor just pass the marijuana thing today? <laughs> he signed it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's another farm. With respect to this lease, it, it 
also includes events, special events, which are what is referred to as the, the uh, annual Chicago River Day, Independence Day fireworks display, uh, the Chicago Southland Dragon Boat Festival, and then a series of music concerts from May through September, and Driving the Dixie, a classic and collectible car rally uh, that features a vintage baseball game, food and music, and other community events. So you should probably consider approving this, and if this can be worked out with the Water Reclamation District for some, in a rational way, to allow this, so be it. But they're not, at this point, budging on this community farm thing. So do you have a motion? Yeah. I need a motion, yes. Motion, yes. by Alderman Farrell. Do we have a second? By Alderman uh, Johnson. Any questions? So I guess we've gone through the questions. Roll call, please. Johnson. Yes. Johnson, aye. Alexander. Aye. Alexander, aye. Bellotto. Aye. Bellotto, aye. Cosidus. Cosidus, aye. Rita. No. Rita, no. Donahue. Aye. Donahue, aye. Holly. Aye. Holly, aye. Farrenwald. Aye. Farrenwald, aye. Hill. Aye. Hill, aye. Mac. Aye. Mac, aye. Carr. Aye. Carr, aye. Cantillo Zellman. Aye. Cantillo Zellman, aye. Eleven ayes and one no, Your Honor. Thank you. Second ordinance is number 2019-022, an ordinance authorizing the sale of personal property owned by the city of Blue Island. Motion. Motion by the car, second by Alderman Bellotto. Any questions? Roll call, please. Johnson. Uh, yes. Johnson, aye. Alexander. Aye. Alexander, aye. Bellotto. Aye. Bellotto, aye. Cossidus. Cossidus, aye. Rita. Aye. Rita, aye. Donahue. Aye. Donahue, aye. Holly. Aye. Holly, aye. Farrenwald. Aye. Farrenwald, aye. Hill. Aye. Hill, aye. Mac. Aye. Mac, aye. Carr. Aye. Carr, aye. Cantillo Zemin. Aye. Cantillo Zemin, aye. Twelve eyes, Your Honor. Thank you. Next. The next is an ordinance prohibiting parking on portions of Highland Avenue within the city of Blue Island, County of Cook, State of Illinois, and providing penalties for the violation thereof. <clears throat> this is on school days, when school is in session, and the hours, I believe, are seven to eight in the morning, and then two to three in the afternoon, and it's between Union and, um, New York. York. And, uh, York, York. York, 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 and Union, thank you. you have a motion? Alderman Cassidis, we have a second. Alderman Hill, any questions? Johnson. Aye. Johnson, aye. Alexander. Aye. Alexander, aye. Bellotto. Aye. Bellotto, aye. Cassidis. Aye. Cassidis, aye. Rita. Aye. Rita, aye. Donahue. Aye. Donahue, aye. aye. <laughs> Holly. Aye. Holly, aye. Farrenwald. Aye. Farrenwald, aye. Hill. Aye. Hill, aye. Mac. Aye. Mac, aye. Carr. Aye. Car I can't tell those women. I can't tell those women. I twelve eyes, Your Honor. Thank you. The last item is resolution number 2019-026, a resolution for improvement under the Illinois Highway Code, sidewalk improvements, location 123rd Street from Maple Avenue to Gregory Street. I have a motion. Alderman Holly, second Alderman Farrell. Any questions? Roll call, please. Yes, Johnson. Your Honor. Yes, quiet. Oh. Um, I just wanted to say that I did have a question about this um, project because it hasn't come to municipal services. Um, I called Mr. Alvarez and he assured me that this is a part of a project that was approved back in 2014. So I just wanted to let everybody know that this actually has already gone through um, municipal services and finance back in 2014 or 2015. So Thank that's you. All. Thank you very much. Got a motion, got a second. Roll call, please. Johnson. Aye. Johnson, aye. Alexander. Aye. Alexander, aye. Bellotto. Aye. Bellotto, aye. Cosidus. Cosidus, aye. Rita. Aye. Rita, aye. Donahue. Aye. Donahue, aye. Holly. Aye. Holly, aye. Farrenwald. Aye. Farrenwald, aye. Hill. Aye. Hill, aye. Mac. Aye. Mac, aye. Carr. Aye. Carr, aye. Cantillo Zellman. Aye. Cantillo Zellman, aye. Twelve eyes, Your Honor. Thank you very much. Thank That's you. all I have, Mayor. Thank you. Uh, committee reports, Community Development Committee. Thank you, Mayor. 
We've had two meetings, but I'm only going to go through the one in a summary of another. So on June 12th, Wednesday at 7 p.m., Community Development met. Alderman Bilotto, Cantello, Mac, Cazares, and Alexander Hawley Johnson were president of the committee. And then we also had Alderman Klinker and, and Johnny Hill there. Building Department was president, Marketing was president. Public comment, we had Ophelia Smith and Alex Leifman spoke on the proposed banquet hall in the form of Klein's building at 13102 Western Avenue. Alderman Jim Klinker met with Ophelia Smith and spoke to the committee. A special meeting of the Community, Devel Community Development Committee will be called on June 24th, 2019 at 7 p.m. to discuss the details of that matter in particular. On our new business, motion by Bellato, seconded by Hawley, to grant an extension to the Fraternal Order of Eagles for their business development grant. All eyes, motion carried. Motion by Bellato, seconded by Mech, to deny five peddler licenses application for power home remodeling. All eyes, motion carried. There was a discussion of the denial of business grant application from Molino Bakery. The building department will work with the owner regarding any future applications. But there was a motion by Alexander, seconded by Mech, to allow a dumpster enclosure for State Farm at 12301 Western Avenue, pending the approval of the Park District. All eyes, motion carried. There was a discussion of recommendation for the building department to visit and rectify the maintenance issues at Thornton Gas Station, located at 2320 127th Street, litter and property maintenance. There was a motion by Kazara, seconded by MEC, to making the removal of the abandoned Sitco Gas Station at 12548 Western Avenue a priority of the committee. It will stay on the committee agenda until it's rectified. Suggestions include removing canopy, privacy fence, to replace the chain link. Um, since then, Mark Miller has communicated that there's very good possibility we can tear down the canopy in the near future. So we're looking forward to handling that in community development. All eyes motion carried. There was a discussion and recommendation to keep the Blue Island Fire Museum a city project and have it regularly placed on this committee's agenda for updates. There was a discussion regarding the proposed city soccer field located along John Street on MWRD property. Alderman Cazares will take the lead of this and schedule a meeting with Mark Miller on the site. The meeting took place. We're moving forward with possibilities. There was a discussion on a proposed daycare facility located at 12128 Western Avenue. Howard gave a brief update regarding the obstacles the owner must rectify moving forward. Number 10, we talked about increasing, I'll, I'll just read a prepared statement, but um, it's basically about the business development district. We're talking about increasing the amount of funding matching from 50% to 75% to increase more businesses to use this. Um, for the audience, in the business district, we have a 1% sales tax that was added on several years ago, and a portion of that goes into a restricted fund that can't be used for anything else but be given back to property owners to maintain and upgrade their property. Anything visible from Western Avenue could be included in this grant. Windows, tuck point, and signage, sidewalk repairs, anything along the business district. The, the unique problem we have as a city, and, and this is something as former Chair Hawley and myself have seen for the last three, four years, nobody's applying for it. Um, and so we're going to make it a little more enticing for a limited time period to December, and we're going to do a PR push after this meeting. Um, to try to get more businesses to apply for it because the money's sitting there. It's one of the few accounts we say we have money in. So we want to inc increase businesses to rectify. They want to put a new sign. They want to tuck point their building or windows. They can get up to $7,500 a calendar year for this. And there's no limit. You can apply every year. So um, as chair and the committee, we would like to mention to the city council that the community development committee discussed and agreed upon modifying the cap percentages and cap amount in regards with the business development grant program. We're proposing to increase the percentage amount from 50 to 75 percent, from 5,000 to 7,500, and cap amount for improvements within the district. This, we believe, especially as a committee, will spur further renovation projects within the boundaries of the business development grant program and make Blue Island a more desirable place to maintain existing businesses and foster new businesses and possibly relocating to Blue Island in the foreseeable future. This has been talked about in committee for probably, I don't know, Tom, six months? We were talking about it? Three months? Three months. And also went through the business uh, owners committee that came out of their committee also. So we'd like to increase that to the end of December, and if it's great and it's going good and there's still money there, we can continue it past that. So a motion made by Hawley, seconded by uh, Mr. Johnson, to modify the Business Development District grant amounts from 50 to 75% for a limited time basis, ending December 31st, 2019. All eyes, motion carried. There was discussion regarding the need to rectify the inconsistency of the sign and building facade code. The committee recommended Howard Kupari to start bringing changes back to the committee for changes. There was a discussion for the community development to have a walk and talk along the business district this summer, a date to be determined and posted as a public meeting in the near future. The committee reviewed the building department reports and asked for a list of new businesses applications to also be included in the monthly reports. Chairman Bilotto brought up a few additional items for discussion, such as parking lot maintenance, the city parking lots, and a dumpster location at Betty's Place. The committee decided the second Wednesday of the month at 7 p.m. will be our regular meeting date, so our next regular meeting is July 10th. Kevin Brown from Brown Town Communications gave a brief update on the role in marketing for the city. We ended the meeting at 10.05 p.m. that night. We had a second meeting on Monday, uh, yesterday, uh, just to deal with Ophelia's uh, banquet hall issues um, and 
the library signage. Um, the minutes haven't gone through the committee yet, but I just wanted to give the update to the public. Thank you. Thank you very much, Alderman. Finance Committee. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, we met, Finance Committee met yesterday. Uh, I will have the minutes from that meeting at the next City Council meeting, but there are two motions I would like the full City Council to approve. First is uh, a motion for approval of accounts payable um, for June 26, 2019 for the amount of $598,128.52. We got a motion. Do we have a second by Alderman Pilato? Any questions? Roll call, please. Johnson. No. Johnson, no. Alexander. Aye. Alexander, aye. Bellotto. Aye. Bellotto, aye. Cosidus. Aye. Cosidus, aye. Rita. Aye. Rita, aye. Donahue. Aye. Donahue, aye. Holly. Aye. Holly, aye. Farrenwald. Aye. Farrenwald, aye. Hill. Aye. Hill, aye. Mech. Aye. Mech, aye. Carr. Aye. Carr, aye. Cantello Zellman. Aye. Cantello Zellman, aye. 11 ayes and 1 no, Your Honor. Thank you very much. And then uh, last is motion for approval of payroll for June 14. 2019 for $348,621.39. We have a motion. Do we have a second? By Alderman Rita. Any questions? Roll call, please. Johnson. No. Johnson, no. Alexander. Aye. Alexander, aye. Bellotto. Aye. Bellotto, aye. Cosidus. Cosidus, aye. Rita. Aye. Rita, aye. Donahue. Aye. Donahue, aye. Holly. Aye. Holly, aye. Farrenwald. Aye. Farrenwald, aye. Hill. Aye. Hill, aye. Mech. Aye. Mech, aye. Carr. Aye. Carr, aye. Cantillo Zellman. Aye. Cantillo Zellman, aye. 11 eyes and 1 million, Your Honor. Thank you very much. And our next meeting will be July the 8th, 2019 at 6 p.m. here in the East Annex. Thank you very much. Thank Public, you. Public Health and Safety Committee? Anyone? Yeah. No? We'll move on. Municipal Services Committee. Uh, yes, Your Honor. I almost um, answered. We met on June the 11th. At 6 o'clock, present were Betty Harmeyer, Eric Alvarez, Ted Ruthenberg, Jim Postrel, Bob Jackson, Mike Marzell, Alderman Mech, Alderman Slattery, and myself. Absent were Alderman Farrenwald and Alderman Rita. Present as guests were Alderman Hill and Treasurer Bellotto. There were no citizens present. Mike Marzell made a statement regarding the announcement of the closing of Metro South Medical Center. The city will be doing everything in its power to keep the hospital open. Jim Postrel gave his monthly report. There was a discussion of the rain garden maintenance proposal by Southside Lawn Care and a proposal by Green Plum Landscaping. There was a motion to table the proposal of Southside Lawn Care and forward the Green Plum Landscaping proposal to finance by Alderman Mech, second by Alderman Slattery. All in favor, motion carried. There was a discussion of the need for no parking on Highland between Union and York. Motion by Alderman Slattery, second by Alderman Mech. All in favor, motion carried. Three handicapped parking signs for res four residents were approved. Under the Water Department, Betty Harmeyer gave her monthly report. Mike Marzell presented the Posen Water Connection proposal for future consideration. It was brought up that any profits from this possible arrangement should be earmarked for street repair in the city of Blue Island. There was a discussion of the um, Ms. McClellan water bill. It was decided unanimously that no further allowances should be made and that the residents should be informed that they must pay for all metered water usage. Mike Marzell offered to send the appropriate letter to the resident. Under the John Rita Recreation Center, Bob Jackson gave his monthly report. There was a discussion of developing a list of needed repairs along with estimates for said repairs. Under the Meadows Golf Course, Ted Ruthenberg gave a verbal report on the operations of the golf course. There was a discussion about the LED lighting proposal installation. Motion to approve by Alderman Mech, second by Alderman Slattery. All in favor, motion carried. Robinson Engineering. Eric Alvarez gave an update on ongoing, <coughs> ongoing projects. There was a discussion on seal coating and supplying chain link fence for certain portions of the Cal Sag Trail. Uh, Eric Alvarez said he had discussed this project with Alderman Bellotto and felt that planning this for next summer and coordinating efforts with the MWRD would be best. There was a discussion of repairing and repaving 121st place. Um, 
Eric Alvarez explained that it would cost nearly twice what the council had set aside for street repairs and suggested that we look at another project. There was a motion to adjourn by Alderman Slattery, second by Alderman Mech. Motion carried. Meeting was adjourned at 6.55. Our next regular meeting will be Tuesday, July the 9th at 6 p.m. here in the East Annex. Thank you very much. Judiciary Committee. So we just had our meeting. Um, and we were only able to get through public comments since there were so many constituents. Thank you for attending. Um, so we're going to have to continue our uh, meeting. Um, we did not get through our agenda to July 1st at 7 p.m. But I also wanted to mention there were several comments made that my agenda was not was never posted. And I did issue it on June 4th, 2019, before I went on vacation. I did it like three weeks ago. So, okay. I just wanted to be sure that and let you know that I did do my agenda. <laughs> oh, okay. So Alderman Holly just confirmed that it was posted. I don't know. There were several people in the meeting who said it was not. Um, so we're going to continue the meeting to July uh, 1st at 7 p.m. and I guess I just changed the date on the agenda then, correct? That'll be fine. I'll, I can repost it. Okay. And the time. Okay, will be at 7. Let, okay. Give me the information. I'll, I'll post it tomorrow. Thank you. Anything else, Alderman? Nothing? That's it. Any automatic announcements or comments? Mm -hmm. uh, I'd like to remind everybody to buy their vehicle stickers for deadline. Oh. Yeah. Sweet, right? City Clerk, one of yeah, and I, and I, we will be open uh, this Saturday from eight to noon for the for the the last the last hurrah for people coming and we'll be a little busy but we'll take care of you. And then after that, it goes price goes the, up. There is a five day grace period, so July eighth is when it doubles. So maybe we can make sure that's on our website and make sure that everyone knows. Yeah, we'll put it out there. Anybody else? Alderman Casares. Yeah. Yeah. Blue on the park. Splash for Cash event on July 13th, and the uh, reason I'm bringing this up right now is because uh, in previous years, last year, a lot of generous government and committee men and members of this board uh, donated um, to supplement the, the program itself. Uh, this year, we're, we are going to uh, uh, make that request again, but uh, I did have a great suggestion from Alderman Holloway last year to uh, request that, if possible, that uh, uh, any donors us with uh, gift certificates or gift cards to in, in lieu of cash to businesses in Blue Island. Um, more information on that will be coming. And also, the Blue Island Park District has officially began their back to school uh, uh, school supplies school supply drive that will be hosted on August 18th. We are looking for donations of any kind, especially uh, uh, new and gently used school supplies. Thank you very much, Alderman. Alderman Johnson. Yes, um, I got a couple questions. I wanted to know the state of the Tahoe, where are we at with that. Mm -hmm. uh, the next one is where are we uh, with the procedural audit? And um, I'd like to, uh, I know Jim Postal usually reaches out to Cook County for me cut the weeds uh, up under the Kedzie Bridge and fencing along the top of that bridge because there's people homes under there and people throwing beer bottles and bricks and everything down there. Uh, people walk, you know, and they live down there, so I don't want no, you know. I think that with the fencing we have to go through the county because it's in Kedzie under their control. Right, So we'll because they got a big cement barrier sitting there where somebody hit the railing and they didn't come fix it, but they just got the cement barrier sitting there. All right. Regarding the tacos, I had a meeting uh, last week with the authorities, so uh, they're reviewing documentation that I presented to them, so just waiting for their, their final uh, investigation. So did they give us a, a time and no. date? Or no. No. Okay. And the, the other thing is still dealing with uh, Cook County about uh, the grass and uh, needs to be cut along 139th Street as well as Cooper's Grove. I know part of that barrier is like Robbins, but it's like growing over the sidewalks and everything. So 
what I want my daily walkers who don't, do not utilize, you know, the gym in the summertime because they'd rather be outside, you know, they're scared to walk on the sidewalks because you don't know what might come up out there out of the weeds. Okay. Any other, Alderman Rita? Um, in regards to the uh, tall grass, I have 127 21 Lincoln and 21 15 York. Um, if we can get that on the uh, cut list, the vacant property cut list. I did um, talk to the building department, but I just wanted to uh, bring it to your attention. <clears throat> it's about four feet high. Okay. Let me just throw this out. City needs help. This is our city. If you can do it, give a hand. I've done it. Neighbors have done it. If you see a neighbor needs help, cut their grass, help them out. It's been a lot of rain, a lot of water, a lot of sun, so it's growing like you wouldn't believe. So if you can help, help them out, please. Everybody helps to help each other, not just depend on the city to do everything. Again, if we cut it, it's costing us. It's costing people. So if you can help, appreciate it. And Mayor, we, we actually got summer jobs for people. Right. Uh, you know, to help out with this because of, you know. The and we are looking for rain. workers at Public Works. We're short. So we hire them. So we are hiring, okay? Alderman, go ahead. Uh, a couple points. One is uh, that I would like to really urge Judiciary Committee to have our city attorney at Judiciary Committee uh, meetings. I don't like to suggest that we have double billings going on in there, but it does seem that for continuity, um, I, I think that would, that's really important to have city attorney involved that got a lot of knowledge about everything that goes on here. Uh, second, uh, I'm wondering if there are any other aldermen by myself, other than myself, who have not yet been contacted by Montana and Welch. Has anyone not been contacted by Montana and Welch? Hmm. How interesting. Um, and I read their, their agreement with the city, and the first line of it is, quote, our representation will include such legislative council services to the aldermen of Blue Island. I am an alderman of Blue Island. Uh, is uh, Representative of Montana Welch here today? No. No, she left. Right. Uh, I do not understand why three aldermen have not been contacted by our law firm. Um, Carrie's my law firm. I'm sorry. Yeah, well, <laughs> that's another matter. <laughs> I contacted them. Alderman Farrenwell, I contacted them. I reached out to them. That's good. Um, finally, uh, or the second thing here I'd like to talk about is, um, well, just the final thing is actually a positive thing. Uh, we have, uh, and I know the mayor has helped us with uh, the tree program in the past. Uh, we had a successful year already this year. We got close to our 100 year, or our 100 tree goal. And, um, we have already, not contract, but had an agreement uh, with the organization that they will supply us with at least 165 trees next year. So we're well on our way to our 100 tree goal for next year, and the mayor was facilitating that. So thank you very much. You're welcome. Anybody else? Let me make this comment to the city of Blue Island. Fireworks. They've started already. Unfortunately, last year, to be honest with you, it was unbearable. And we all know who the ones are, the ones blowing them up, but nobody calls. I've called this past week at 11 p.m., midnight, one in the morning. And it's always the same people, always the same people, okay? Again, there's issues with the elderly. There's people who are sick. There's people who are pet owners, and we all know who we are, okay? Three years ago, my dad lost his dog, a 14 years German Shepherd. He died of a heart attack because of the fireworks. The 4th of July is not a good day for our family, okay? There's people with children, young babies. So we gotta be considerate. I mean, these are not your normal sparklers, rockets. These are quarter sticks of dynamite, things that you can hear from one in the town, to the other. We live in a city, not in a war zone. <laughs> Seriously. 
not in a war zone, but it appears that we do live in a, in a war zone because every year, every year, the neighbors try to outdo the other. So we're going to need your assistance. In all due respects, Chief, I know you're going to be inundated, but we need to get a control on this because it's getting out of hand. Uh, here's an issue in my old neighborhood. We have a lumber company behind us, and these fireworks are going off close to that lumber company. We had an issue when that lumber company, as a result of fireworks, started a fire. And they were lucky the firemen, uh, Blue Island Fire Department, thank you, stopped the fire. But if that fire goes, all of Irving and everything surrounding will go. So please, if you know who the culprits are, yes, it's Independence Day, but not 11, 12, 1, 2, 3 in the morning. I wish I could do it. I'll blow it up right when they're sleeping to show them what it is, how it feels. Just cognizant of that. Thank you. We need to uh, retire to post session for consideration of pending litigation. So I need a motion. Alton Donahue, that was second by Alderman Kill. All in favor? Aye. 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 We have a motion to reconvene. A motion by Alderman Carr, second by Alderman Kill. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. City Council. Uh, City Attorney. Yes. In closed session, the city council was brought up to speed on some pending litigation in a lawsuit recently filed by Affordable Recovery Housing. Uh, there was a discussion concerning a proposal to the city for the purchase of, or the sale of real estate to the city. The city council also uh, was, was apprised of a, a final settlement in litigation Actually, it's not a lawsuit, but it, it, it's a, a claim that was made by Ricardo Lewis and Jacque Lewis uh, against the city of Blue Island. At this point, I would ask for a motion from the city council to authorize the finalization of the settlement uh, with respect to Ricardo, Lu excuse me, Ricardo Lewis and Jacque Lewis. As explained in the closed session, the total settlement is eighteen thousand dollars. Got a motion by Alvin Johnson, second by Alvin Hawley. Any questions? Roll call, please. Okay, Johnson. Aye. Johnson, aye. Alexander. Aye. Alexander, aye. Bellato. Aye. Bellato, aye. Cosidus. Aye. Cosidus, aye. Rita. Aye. Rita, aye. Donahue. Aye. Donahue, aye. Holly. Aye. Holly, aye. Farrenwald. Aye. Farrenwald, aye. Hill. Aye. Hill, aye. Mac. Aye. Mac, aye. Carr. Aye. Car, aye. Cantello Zoman. Aye. Cantello Zoman, aye. 12 ayes. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Council. Thank you. And now I need a motion for adjournment. Motion by Alvin Johnson, second by Alvin Farewell. All in favor? Aye. aye. All opposed? Any opposed? Thank you. Be safe. Be a storm tonight.